Today we're going to break down which is better, a mega factory or modular factory. So if you find this video helpful, hit the thumbs up and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Now there are two main tracks of thought when it comes to factories. The first is pooling all of your resources in one location to be manufactured into items and the second setting up multiple smaller factories dedicated to one or a handful of items then to be sent to another factory. Now I often say that it comes down to personal taste, but there are other reasons why to choose one over the other. But first, let's compare the positives and negatives of each style. Now a mega factory, actually before we get into that, I should state it doesn't need to be a mega factory that produces billions of items per minute. Uh, for this use case, uh, it's a factory that is dedicated to the vast majority of items that you produce. Now this can be very useful. Firstly, you do not need to travel outside of the factory and you can slowly expand it outwards. This is easily done because with a mega factory, all of your resources in order to grow your factory are situated nearby, which is another plus, because few people like traversing across the map if there are any issues with their logistic network. Now, along with the resources nearby, this also means that you are not entirely dependent on transporting produced items from multiple different factories, which for some may become overwhelming if you're using dozens of trains or drones or vehicles for that matter. And you could also argue that a central storage facility isn't as necessary as all resources are nearby. And one potential thought is kind of the bragging rights that you get with such a massive factory. Hell, we all know how cool Kibitz's factory looks. And speaking of big factories, actually, the largest factory I've ever seen produces 100 nuclear pasta a minute. Now, I'll put a link to that spotlight in the top of the video uh, in the cards now if you'd like to check it out. It's pretty spectacular, just on its industrial magnitude. Now, a modular factory, on the other hand, has other important perks and again to state for the purpose of this video these are factories that tend to be much smaller dedicated to one or a couple of items which then sends the manufactured items on to another factory to be produced into something else for example a factory may be dedicated to smelting iron copper and cotarium and from here the resources are sent to an iron factory which produces the plates and the rods and the screws a copper factory which is dedicated to the sheets, cable and wiring, and a Caterium factory which is focused on the quick wire. And then all of these resources from those factories will be sent on to another factory to produce something. Now this requires a lot more thought when it comes to the logistics front, as you'll be setting up the inputs and outputs of resources between many factories, and this for some may become overwhelming. But personally, I think that having a running logistics system of dozens of trains really makes the world feel alive. And you could use vehicles or even conveyors, but I am personally a big train lover if you hadn't noticed already. Now along with this, building multiple factories actually gives you a lot of freedom to play around with your build styles. So if you're looking to improve your factory's aesthetics, this can be something that gives you that freedom. Whether you're building an open factory or one that's closed up, you can really play around with the styles. Uh, like for example, what, what I've done with this Fixmas factory, or the multiple other factories that we have spread around this save. Now you also don't need to worry about space, as you can build another factory in another location. It's a small perk, but it really does help a lot. And this is particularly prevalent for the main perk of going down the modular factory route. And it's a big one. If you don't have a beast of a machine or a dedicated server, multiple smaller factories will save you FPS. Have you ever walked up into a well-built up factory and seen your frames plummet? Well, think about how your PC will feel running everything in one location. And uh, speaking of FPS, if you want to know just how good a dedicated server can be at saving FPS, I'll put a link to that video 
in the cards above as well. So with the two groups of perks, I guess you could say, let's compare the two styles directly. And then after we'll talk about how I'd break down a new factory and what I transport and why. So first we had the modular factories. These um, include the, the, the factory just looks busy with all the, the trains, for example, it looks very alive. Um, it also gives you the freedom to experiment with build styles and you don't need to worry about the space in your factory and the other one is saving a lot of fps compared to built up areas which are great if you don't have a beastly pc or a dedicated server however the negatives are that logistics can get overwhelming quite easily and you become dependent on a dedicated storage facility otherwise you're traveling around a lot um, whether that's for building parts for a new factory or just collecting items that you need. Uh, and the other thing is that you may need to fix your logistics, uh, which means you're going to be traveling around a lot. Whereas mega factories can be great uh, because you don't need to travel all over the world to check your factories. You also have all resources nearby so you can easily expand the factory and you're less dependent on the balancing act of dozens of different items coming to your factory. Uh, along with that, you're also less dependent on a storage facility because you have everything nearby and you get the bragging rights for having a really cool big factory. But the negatives are that you run the risk of pinning down a single style of architecture for your factory, which kind of prevents that freedom of expression, something that I really enjoy in Satisfactory. And you can also end up dealing with lots of spaghetti at your factory uh, because you've got hundreds, well, not hundreds, but dozens of different items traveling to all the different like sections of your factory. So do make sure that if you're going down the mega factory route that you have dedicated like, transport logistic floors for your items. And the other thing, of course, which we spoke about is that you run the risk of struggling to cope with FPS later in the game. Now, hopefully this will give you an idea as to which style best caters for yourself, your personal situation, as it can be different. If I'm running a, a, my 3080 Ti and 32 gigs of RAM and a, a good CPU, then I'm able to obviously build a much bigger factory than someone who's playing on a laptop, for example. So you do need to think about your own personal situation when it comes to this. And I'll admit that Though I do have some larger factories, even I tend to go for the modular build approach. And I think that we'd all agree that the biggest argument for not building a single mega factory is the lag that comes with a large build. Um, but perhaps this will change as the game becomes steadily more optimized. Um, but for the time being, if you're concerned with your PC's ability, I do recommend the modular factory approach. When it comes to your factories though, uh, one question that I've always been asked which pertains to this situation is um, how do you work out what you're transporting? And so I highly recommend whenever you can reducing the amount of resources that you're transporting at any one time. For example, if you're going to be to uh, taking 3000 Caterium or per minute to a factory, hypothetically, let's say, it would be better to smelt it first into 1000 Caterium ingots as that will reduce the strain on your PC. Or if you need 1000 wire per minute, I'd recommend transporting the copper ingots and producing the wire at your factory rather than transporting all the, the, the wire. But regardless of your build style, this will help. And for more suggestions on logistics, why not check out this video on logistics? Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, hit the like. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks does go to our amazing supporters, most notably our solo clips patrons, The Calamity, Cerebral Tag, James Irwin, and Jerry too, as well as our Lunas, Dixie Chris, Lord of July, and Ben, as well as our Blood Moon, Papa Snoozy. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.